nations. We can see more who has taken various steps for quality of education. We are organizing this today with this global in mind. I am Mamtaz Roksan Akhtar, assistant teacher. Madam Imran Shah Jan High School, Shita Kundu, Chattagaram. Uh, now, um, we have joined uh, our we world educator, uh, country founder of country, uh, Priyanka and Srivasta from India, uh, country head, India chapter. Uh, Priyanka, please say something uh, about we. Hello, Priyanka, are you there? Hello, Priyanka? Um, hello, Priyanka, are you there? No. Hello, Priyanka. Hello, Hi. Priyanka, are you there? Hey, please say something about ah, Ui. Yes. Ah. Having some network issues today here. So, okay. So, first of all, welcome all of you on this we Bangladesh chapter first event. And thanks to Madam Rukshana for initiating this for your country. Uh, having some thick issues. Okay, so before, approximately before one, one and a half month, we started the we platform it started from India only because I was alone and uh, wanted to have a big team to uh, to spread it in India as well in different states of India, different cities of India, and uh, and also in other countries as well. So uh, in the first uh, first initiative, it started in India. Next was the sorry next was the nepal chapter and now madam Dokshana uh, has been started uh, our v initiative in bangladesh so many please. Yeah. hello please hello can i speak <laughs> Please, if you huh. are talking on phone, yes. mute yourself. Yeah. So, uh, many of you have already joined the V uh, events, uh, previous events. So, who are new, first timers? Uh, so, just would like to tell you about V initiative. So, what is V? V. Uh, Actually, V stands for Word Educators. This is a platform where the Word Educators can communicate, collaborate, and learn together. That's why, uh, actually, this was my dream to connect to the educators from around the world. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, that when we, uh, we need something, we are in trouble, then... Uh, then some new things happen. Actually, our brain works more fast. <laughs> so uh, in the pandemic uh, time, I was uh, very busy uh, having my online classes and uh, other things as well, uh, you, uh, you people do. So just, th uh, just uh, thought about this, this thing that we should have, we can have, actually we can have a virtual platform for the teachers or uh, we can have this virtually actually because physically it's not possible not every teacher from around the world can uh, uh, can uh, join a meeting physical meeting so uh, in virtual platform it's very easy and the result is <laughs> in front of you you all people are here joined with me virtually so here we can share our knowledge uh, our experiences and many more things, even the teaching ideas, we can have many different things together. And this will absolutely improve quality of education in entire world. And teacher, uh, teacher is the, I think this is the best profession teaching. We are the guru, we are the uh, makers of every other profession. Either it may be doctor, engineer, or pilot or astronaut or anyone some teacher is behind him or her so uh, 
we is what we is a platform where we can unite uh, and uh, i have i have divided in in different sections according to the country for example in india we are having uh, state heads in different states of india and then they can uh, make a team under them uh, on the district level so this will be a chain process you are joined uh, from your country uh, and like rukshana ma'am there will be a country head myself uh, uh, having con uh, country head responsibility for now for india uh, right now as as i get a proper person to uh, deal with it i will really <laughs> appreciate if some other person uh, handle the pro uh, responsibility of country head india right now uh, i am doing the same thing so we are going to have different type of activities that include these type of conferences where we can share ideas and some workshops some lectures and even some motivating speakers as well from not only teachers we can have some motivators as well we have some mentors so if you have read the brochure of we we have created that if you don't have you uh, can ask with uh, mumtaj ma'am i will i have shared with her so i i will uh, i will be very happy if you share what you can provide what you can contribute towards this initiative uh, for example someone is perfect in mathematics and some other person is a chemistry teacher but he or she is perfect in motivation as well so we can have them as our speakers in our meetings and uh, our workshops also if someone is very efficient in particular technical tool which is used in teaching just like patricia ma'am is here <laughs> so uh, some any type of informative sessions which are useful for teachers and as well for the welfare of students he or she can join us and uh, together we will learn i will learn from you and uh, you will learn together <laughs> i am i am actually illiterate <laughs> i believe that i am illiterate and i am learning still so uh, we learn from you people you are my mentors guides and everything you my teacher as well so uh, i can't do these things i can't do these things alone it's a big task very big task and today's topic is also a uh, what quality of education from sdgs so quality of education in every district every uh, town level can be improved if we join hands if we teachers join hands together for example as i stay in india uh, so i have seen that many uh, especially in government schools please don't mind if uh, any government teacher from india is there please don't mind this is truth actually many of the government schools don't have from cm don't have actually in i don't say about infra uh, infrastructure actually they don't have the teachers actually for having a degree um, which is required for teaching job is not sufficient teaching is a passion this is not a job so if someone wants to uh, teach actually actually teach so he he or she must have some a passion for teaching to make uh, students learn so teachers are uh, i believe that teachers are co parents for the students as they should uh, they should be so curious ab uh, about their students about their problems that they should, uh, they uh, becomes co parents means next to parents so parents uh, just uh, what they do uh, yeah. in india especially at some large schools in intensive schools they actually good uh, in uh, about studies they are actually good but they are charging too much so uh, this week only i have started one more initiative just for your information that is l o w e sounds like love 
so that is love for teach uh, for students from the teachers the teachers love for students so what is that there i am uh, uniting i am uh, inviting some students from different schools from all over uh, india uh, and providing them the international platforms even if uh, one of uh, one of you have some something special that is not available in some uh, some schools here so you can have a session with them they will learn from you and uh, like uh, the team japan is doing very wonderful in these things they are providing much uh, knowledge uh, to the to the students of their own country and other countries as well so uh, for students i am working similar to similar to that not same similar to that and i have started from the students of uh, military schools army schools and air force schools only from india right now so uh, yeah, this is just for your right, information yeah. and uh, yeah yes ma'am Yanka, please have your discussion. Yeah, please, Yanka. So, yes, yes. Hello. Ha ha. Just tell me. Please your discussion. Yes, I should. Uh, I sure. I think the discussion should be in started uh, now from the speakers, right? Yes. About quality education, the speaker should start, right? yes we have limited time and i have much more to speak <laughs> we can discuss later as well am i right I... mamtaj ma'am yes <laughs> <laughs> you discussed you discussed one of my the... favorite ekajan oh. ma'am has just joined <laughs> welcome ma'am yes huh. yeah so mamtaj ma'am you just announced the speakers huh. thank you so uh -huh. much for joining all of you huh. thank you priyanka please please go ahead um, thank you priyanka um, for description 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 about we world educator bangladesh chapter nepal chapter india chapter and others thank you for your valuable and informative uh, discussion uh, now i would like to share this is our uh, speakers uh, just mamtaz roksana the country had um, we all educated bangladesh chapter uh, priyanka and shribas the founder and india head of country india then our speak prominent speakers uh, shamsuddin talukdar uh, shondeep maloya and uh, professor mujibur rahman sir or uh, patricia abrona uh, elaboration uh, thanks Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the best Bengali of the millennium, the father of the Bengali nations, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Ashish Dar Kid Chop Digital, Bangladesh. Hello. Now we will pay homage to our national anthem. So I would urge everyone to stand up and show respect, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Screen, let us see. 
मैडम सुना था सर ओके साउंड इज वेरी लो मैडम तुलना मुलक बाबे कौन सुनती थी thank you for respecting our national anthem today's topic theme quality of education more than 11 over country have joined us now i would like to in today's program dr mojibur rahman sir is being honored as a chief guest i would like to request dr mojibur rahman sir are you there hello hello good evening hello good evening everybody looks on a good evening thank you good evening sir uh, Please, yes, sir. About your fellow, I request you, sir, about your fellow in this delivery. Uh, I'm very happy along with you. You because we're working for we educators or we educator, and in this part of the world, from Bangladesh, you were indeed piloting it, and from India, Priyanka talked among us. I do welcome you all. Good evening, everybody, and uh, we are happy as teachers that we are here. on this platform uh, as today's topic is uh, prefixed as quality education uh, it's an umbrella term we know and education itself actually is a word that uh, regulates the whole world as priyanka said education or those who are the educators or this profession of education or educators profession indeed is the mother of all profession indeed as we are teachers we are honored as being teachers so i do welcome here everybody and uh, as uh, priyanka said we are here in order to exchange our ideas our uh, conceptions etc we are 
a sort of collaborative uh, program, it is, where teachers are here with ideas. Teachers will exchange their ideas. They will share their problems, their possibilities, potentialities, everything will be exposed. I would like to uh, remember one of the sayings by Barnard Shaw. He says, if you have an apple and I have an apple, if I give my apple to you and you give your apple to me, then everyone will have one. But you, if you have an idea and I have an idea, if we do a change, then you will have two ideas and I will have two ideas. So this is a platform where ideas will be changed and we will be enriched. Uh, in respect of quality education, I would like to say quality, the very term itself, enshrines a lot many things indeed. So first of all, those were the students. They, uh, from the very beginning, their early childhood matters. If they're with good health, they will be able to receive more. If there is good infrastructure in respect of educational institutions, they will feel comfort. If teachers are knowledgeable, competent, motivating, inspiring, they will be inspired, they will be motivated, they will learn more. So a lot many things indeed work together in order to ensure quality education, no single factor actually is enough. A lot many things work together in order to ensure quality of education. So I would like to emphasize all those things because education, this idea actually uh, invites all us over here and those who are the teachers from the time immemorial till today, everyone thinks they were the great thinkers of the world. Education brings about overall changes in the world. So nowadays, we know we are living in a world that is highly sophisticated in respect of technology. Cutting is technological research and innovation marks the age. And today, uh, the whole world is passing a time. We say it's a very rough time tough time, crucial time, because we are amidst a uh, pandemic that visits mankind after 100 years. So even today, we educators worldwide, we are not maintaining silence. We are not keeping ourselves calm. We are with our education, taking the help of these online facilities. We are disseminating education everywhere where we are, even in a country like Bangladesh. Uh, you know, Bangladesh is on the way to be a developing country. So it's a middle income country now. Uh, you know, by 2024, it will become a developing, then we would like to be a developed by 2041. So education is actually a factor that will decide whether we'll be able to go over there whether we'll be able to touch the journey to prosperity. And here education will play the key role. Because overall consciousness among all the people, all strata, all classes, everyone will be motivated to, their, to do their respective jobs if, they're, if they become conscious enough. And education will indeed mold them, shape them. And behind that, educators play the vital role. That's why uh, I would like to say those who are teachers over here, all of us, those who are here present today from Argentina, from Bangladesh, from India, uh, from all the countries, those who uh, joined here. As teachers, we could uh, say that yes, we are doing our job with sincerity. Ours is a very dedicated job because we are working on human mind, human psyche, it's a very sophisticated job, you know. And uh, for that reason, if you ask me, what is quality education? How, how, how can we ensure quality education? This is a $6 million question indeed, because it won't, won't come overnight. That is, you won't be able to ensure quality of education overnight. As uh, Shams, before this program, before the start of this program, 
Shamsuddin, sir, he was talking about the ambience prevailing in our educational institutions regarding urinals in schools, especially at girls' schools in our country. So in our schools, in the rural areas, certainly schools, as people are underprivileged, so are the schools. So are the schools, education institutions. So government is trying its best to provide all the facilities in order to ensure quality education so that they can learn well, so that they can think well, so that they can bring about changes in their life. So in order to ensure quality education, my dear teachers, those who are here, you know, uh, a, paradigm, a paradigm shift is needed. That is, earlier, we considered student life is a life of preparation. Now, John Dewey, as a, uh, actually as an educational philosopher, he said that, no, education, that is, student of itself, you were, what you were doing, what you were learning, actually, you were exercising your life skills over here. That is, you begin learning your life skills from the very day you go to yourself and meet it in school. That is our main need-based education, or education in order to enhance the quality of life, education in order to improve the quality of life. We are doing everything. Our government, our society, our guardians, parents, teachers, everybody, those who are involved. Because education, you know, any education institutions is not an island isolated from the society. It is regulated by, it is formed by, it is shaped by, molded by the society. Because parents are there as guardians, government is there as regulating forces, teachers are there as motivators, facilitators, students are there in order to learn, in order to exchange their ideas, their likings, their dislikings, etc. Nowadays, the whole idea of Teaching learning has got a big, I could say, uh, somersault. It experienced a sort of uh, somersault, a sort of uh, paradigm shift. Because earlier, teachers, as I'm speaking here, so soliloquizing all the time I'm speaking. But nowadays, teachers' role changed totally. They become the facilitators. They would stand amid the students. The students will think, they will talk, they will share their ideas, and in such a way that his mind will be connected. So such a sort of class will be very brimming with ideas, will be uh, indeed a class vibrant enough with all the uh, life-changing uh, things. That's why I would like to say that in today's world, those who are the, in our country, I could say that education, those who become teachers, it is the last choice because teachers worldwide in different countries, teachers enjoy facilities or they enjoy world-class life in all respect uh, in some countries. But in Bangladesh, even today, teachers are not that much privileged. They're struggling in order to improve their life. So if teachers, Actually, they don't have that opportunities. They won't be able to do what they expect to do. That's why teachers must raise their voice in order to have opportunities, in order to improve their life, in order to improve their educational qualities. If they can uh, bring about a change, positive change, qualitative, qualitative change in their life, they'll be able to inject it, spread it, disseminate it, in the lives of the millions of students. So teachers first. That's why I appreciate this uh, sort of gathering of teachers, or we, uh, India chapter, Bangladesh chapter, that is teachers when they will uh, gather together, when they will assemble, certainly they'll speak up their problems, their constraints, their resources, everything. They will share what specialty, indeed they are aware within themselves, the poses within themselves they will be able to share. And this sharing and caring ultimately will improve, will enhance the overall quality of teachers, uh, educators, or teaching, etc. That's why I would like to appreciate 
it's a sort of initiative that has been taken by teachers like Priyanka or in our country, uh, 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 among us. So uh, those uh, teachers over here today, once again, I would like to appreciate them. And if I am to continue, uh, I must tell that, yes, in order to ensure quality education, we have to think a lot many, we have to think in our country, those are the teachers over here, and those are the teachers from other countries. If I am to uh, talk about our country or about our country regarding our perspective, our country, perspective of our country, I must say that we bear the British legacy that is in our country. When a fresh graduate comes out of university or college, he comes to a college or school without any training. First of all, he or she joins schools or colleges, then he or she goes to pedagogy training. That is not training first. But in other countries, those who are educationally advanced countries over there, training first. Because a teacher must know how to disseminate, how to teach, how to is important. What you, you are teaching is not important. In respect to teaching, how is important because what you are teaching, that matters not most, but how you are, because how is important? Because you are trying to reach, you are trying to touch the mind of the student so that they can understand you, so that you can uh, stir his thinking, so that you can motivate him. Because nowadays, the main task of a teacher is to stimulate, uh, brain of the student, to stimulate him to think, because thinking come for, comes first. Earlier, we had to memorize everything. We had to regurgitate everything. We had to commit into memory in order to vomit in the exam halls. Nowadays, in our country, this scenario is somehow changing a little. Though not everywhere, we are witnessing it, but in uh, some cases, considerably, that nowadays teachers, as they are changed, so they are trying to change the pattern. And government, our NCTV, our authority, those who are regulating education, they are trying to bring about uh, bring about changes in our education institution in respect of conducting classes, setting questions papers, and conducting examination everywhere, so that uh, students don't only memorize things they must know how to think, how to is important. But earlier, they didn't. They only, you know, memory first, knowledge, memory, etc. That is, how to collaborate knowledge, how to synthesize knowledge, how to analyze. Uh, that is, creative aspects certainly will come later on. Because we know every human being is creative, but you have to uh, raise that, aspect of creation or that aspect of creative propensity or tendency or proclivities within him, if you are creative, if you can think in you, if you can stimulate him to uh, think then, whether uh, you can hear me, isn't it? You can listen to me, I'm, I'm talking. Hello, everybody. You can listen to me. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, your time 15 minutes. Uh, okay, okay, when my time is on, uh, After 40 minutes, I will talk to you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, teachers are great talkers. They all the time talk. Because, you know, uh, if we want to start talking, 40 minutes at a stretch, it becomes a habit. But nowadays, as uh, pedagogical or pedagogical uh, things come to us, nowadays, we, 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 are, we are telling our colleagues or we ourselves, we are talking to ourselves that yes, you are a speaker, but you must not speak within your, before your students, not more than 15 minutes because they are to work. You are to engage them. You are to involve them in class activities. You are to give them some work. So for involving and engaging students in the classroom, teachers are to work hard Oh. So all the times, that's why the responsibility of a teacher is so great, because all the time he must think. He must think new. 
he must he must think how to present in a different way. So teacher's uh, job is something that strikes innovation. Nowadays, we used to say, be innovative. But in our country, we used to purchase innovation in the aspect of technology. But in upkeep, upkeeping technology, in maintaining technology, if we begin hiring manpower also, then it will be a disaster. That is, at our universities, at our colleges, we must inculcate the sort of knowledge, world-class knowledge, so that we can do all these things. We can upkeep innovation. Because today's world, you know, it is totally technological, technology-based. We used to say knowledge-based economy. What is it? What is knowledge? What is information? What is wisdom? A lot many things come up over here. And at the same time, today's world experiencing a lot many things in the aspect of uh, if we consider moral aspects of the world, then it lies with the teachers because the whole world is an extended classroom everywhere under the sun. Those who are working, whatever their job is, everyone comes out of the classroom. If a classroom, if a teacher can motivate them well, if a teacher can influence them well, they will be good human beings. So responsibility of a teacher is indeed superb. Responsibility of a teacher is indeed great because a teacher, teacher's influence touches eternity. Nobody can tell why it stops, why it is called. Because wherever a person goes, he carries some influence of a teacher. And that's why if our moral compass as teachers, we are morally upright, then our students will be morally upright. So all the times, as teachers, we not only show them the way that this is the shortcut. There is no royal road to learning. As teachers, we all know there is no shortcut. There is no royal road to learning. A teacher is a lifelong learner, we used to say. We learn all the times. We learn in order to disseminate. We learn in order, in order to share. We learn even from our even from our touch, even from our students, all the time. So we have to be open-minded all the times. And that's why in today's world, all the times you have to learn uh, technology. We have to learn how this world is running first towards, we you know, uh, artificial intelligence. We used to listen to all the things because today's students are much more faster than we people are, we the teachers are. In most of the countries, especially uh, on the developing countries or developing countries, most of the teachers, because teaching in our countries, as I have told you earlier, it's not the first choice of a bright student. That's why we teachers, we must not lag behind. All the times we have to try hard, strive hard in order to, in order to develop ourselves in order to hone our capacity, our capability, our competence. Otherwise, we won't be able to share a lot many things with, with our students. And that's why I would say that in our country, especially those who are the teachers from abroad, for them I'm telling, in our country, uh, there is no uh, stream that yes, if you pursue this four years honors course, you will be a teacher. No, that is, Teaching is not your occupation or profession that we prepare for. That is, there are uh, not a class of people in our country that prepare themselves to be a teacher. So here teachers, they are actually, uh, most of the teachers, you could say, they actually uh, resort to this profession because they have to find out a job. But after uh, receiving the job or after coming to the job, we prepare ourselves, then we get the motivation. Certainly, we value our teachers, we value education, but in our country, education is not that much esteemed even today. The cause is obvious. In our country, jobs are not discipline-oriented. Disciplines are not job-oriented. That is, 
if somebody pursues his honors course from Islamic history and culture, he finds the job in a bank. If somebody pursues his honors course from applied physics, he works at a bank. So this is sheer waste of our education because education is something spatial. That is, it's not something, uh, you could say something very much general. As uh, honest education, we see it's not for the general knowledge. It's a spatial knowledge about spa on spatial subject. So teaching is something spatial on spatial subject. So we have to prepare ourselves all the times. If I teach English, so I, I am to know how to teach a language well. Because in our country, I am a teacher of uh, literature indeed. And in our country, if we teach English as a foreign language, even in our country, uh, very unfortunately, I am to tell you that in our country, there is no language police. English is not second language, it's a foreign language, as there is no language police in our country. So how to teach a foreign language? In our country, we know that yes, there are four skills of a language, but at no level of our education, these four skills are evaluated. At no level of our education, at no examinations, these four levels are tested, yeah. are evaluated. Even uh, listening is a scheme. It's not taught at all. <clears throat> how to listen? We are not taught how to listen. We don't know how to listen. So listening is not tested. In, uh, if we consider all those aspects, in our, in our schools even, those who pursued their honors courses in Bangla, they teach at school. And CL2 for chlorine, he teaches his students C12. CL2 for chlorine, he teaches C12. What is it? Because teaching is not subject oriented most of the times. Oh, so we let time one minute. Your remaining time is one minute. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion. Once again, I'd like to say that yes, we are to hone our capabilities our competence, and we have to struggle hard as we are here in Bangladesh. Certainly, we have to ensure our quality of education by trying to, uh, by trying to hone our capabilities as teachers, because teachers are at the center. If teachers are knowledgeable, they are competent, certainly they will be able to shape and mold the life of the students. Thank you, everybody. Good evening once again. Thank you. I'm told. Roxana, I have completed my Thank delivery you, over here. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you sir. sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We are bound by the shortness of time. If we could hear, sir, we would be able to prosper. Many thanks to sir for conveying his important message to us. I hope we have learned a lot from this space, which I believe will help us a lot of reach ourselves and build our future generation properly. Thank you again, sir. Thank you very much. Now, um, we have involved uh, now I would uh, love to request uh, Mr. Shamsuddin Talukdasar, uh, TT College, Kumilla. Assalamu alaikum. I hope uh, everyone is in good mood. We listen a very important topic and discussion from our- Sir, your time is 15 minutes. Okay. After 14 After minutes, our... I will alarm to you. It's okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is very important. Today, here we are together to understand and to talk about quality education. I'll just set some example. Before that, uh, this is very important in our perception, what should we understand by the term quality education? Nothing is fixed. As we run first, the educational aspect ideas will be changed with that of the environment and the situation. But a common thing is that 
every day we are facing a lot of problems. Even in our coming world, we have to face a lot of problems, which still now we don't know what the nature will be that problem. But we can just predict uh, some. So we have to prepare our citizen in order to solve the problem, what he will face. Still now what we don't know. So the thinking level should be gone up to that through which uh, they can predict uh, the problem and they can solve the problem with their understanding. And so they need a, a cooperation, collaboration, critical thinking, it's a kind of order now very uh, important words that educationists are using every day. In COVID situation, this is really a very problematic situation for the art. We never thought that uh, we would be fall in such a situation. So world leaders are trying to solve the problem with their own thinking and they are using collaboration, cooperation. Every short of people with their occupation, they are trying to help in this situation. Social worker, doctors, scientists, politician, even a businessman is contributing a lot to solve the problem. If we think about this situation, in coming days, how our children will solve such kind of problem or the nature of problem might be different than this. Exactly quality education is that education which allow a man to see future, who can predict what will be happen in later and who can solve the problem or might be contribute to solve the problem in order to existence of the people and art. Uh, this is my perception. Uh, so what should we do for our children to overcome those sort of problems? In every country, with their culture and with their understanding, they are shaping their education as well as our international body is tailing, is very clean through SDZ, he declared we need uh, equality. And we have to consider our inclusiveness in our education. Now the question, how should we achieve that? It really depends on the country how they are shaping these things. For third world, the shaping is not as with the first world. But the understanding level is as same as with the first world. We have to use our technology, our ideas, our culture to equip our children in order to solve coming problems. Now, I, I would like to show you a very simple thing. If you look here, uh, would you see this is a series and this is a glass of water. Very simple. If I just put it in a glass of water and it will just push, if I push it, the air bubble will come out. Simple experiment. But if we allow our children to think about it and if we allow them what is the relation with other phenomenon of the nature? So they start to think exactly what can I do with this? My question is that in this COVID situation, in school, they got a lot of activities depending on their uh, situation, uh, school curriculum and other factors. Exactly. So how can we promote this sort of things through virtual media. Why should we not uh, uh, innovate in something where uh, inquiry based learning will go to them? Hello. Maybe net problem. Hello, sir. Unmute your phone. Hello, sir. Unmute your phone. 
Please, sir, unmute your phone. phone. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe there, there was some problem with the net. Thank, thank you, sir. Well, uh, I, I would like to share a screen. Uh, Saiful, yes, sir. would you please give me permission? Yes. Uh, Saiful, sir, please, permission. Yes. Saiful, sir, sir, can you hand to me? Huh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Are, are you seeing? Yes. yes. Is it yes. visible? Yes. By screen? Is yes. It? yes, yes. Okay. A very simple, I, I'll just finish with one simple example. How should we introduce uh, creative learning? Exactly, I choose uh, literature. Because you know, in science, we can do a lot of activities, but in literature, what should we do? Uh, I'm very thankful to uh, Shikok's column. Uh, he arranged this program with uh, children. In that program, uh, uh, exactly, I was just talking with some of the children of our country. And I told them, okay, let us think, uh, how can we collect some word from our nature? So they looked through their windows or door and they collected some word like river, uh, birds, uh, uh, sea, okay, then the melody, something like that. After that, I told them, you just chose other words, which is very similar to them in terms of harmony. So they wrote down the words. And I told them, you have to think uh, about the nature and our problem. You have to write down a sentence, but you have to keep the word at the last. Ultimately, they wrote down the sentences. And I just tell them, you have to make a meaning with that sentence and you have to consider the length of the sentence where you will get a one harmony. And after uh, working half an hour, uh, they, they, they came out with some beautiful things. So they have to inquire a lot of things. Uh, in your screen, you, you just see, I just tell them what are the synonym and antonym. And ultimately, uh, they come out with a poem like this. If you, if you see it, you will see uh, this is the poem. And I told them, uh, you have to give some sense through your poem, then uh, how we can discover our environment. It was really very wonderful experience for me. Uh, within two hours, they come out with a production like this. And uh, you just say, Moder Gair Pashe Chilo Nodi E Kotha Bole Chilo Mod Nadi. It means uh, he's telling once upon a time in our country, in our village, we have a river but we are not seeing that it was told by my grandmother. So, so really they are just going a person who is still now alive and he can ex uh, explain a lot of things what we, we cannot see. So ultimately children come up with this idea. In, in after that line, Amader charidhare koto pakhi, tadere shudhu hue dekhi. They're focusing to the nature. Nature is really very wonderful thing. A lot of articles are there which make me wonder. Ultimately, they became curious, oh, how the phenomenon is working. They are start to asking their fathers and mothers. And they also requested me to sit in with them to explain it. But ultimately, I uh, give them another task. Depending on this poem, they have to make a drama. They have to write a story. They have to draw a picture. Uh, and I'm, I'm really very happy after three days uh, they uh, sent me a lot of writings and pictures, and they, some of them told that uh, they did the drama in their houses. You just say, okay, Tara Shudu Abakhwe Dekhi Choriye Ache Jal Bhara Shagor, Shagor Ere Pare Koto Shoto Nagor. They told about the sea, they told, expressed the importance of water and how the cities are grown up bank of the rivers and the sea. And ultimately, uh, they goes in another chapter they told, okay, the web makes really very harmony and we sound it very nicely. So you just think uh, here, uh, maybe you cannot see very clean. Okay, let me check if it, it come out. Uh, so I can show you, okay, all right, maybe it is coming. Uh, ultimately they draw pictures and they send me those pictures and really I became, uh, maybe due to net connection, this is coming, uh, uh, Quietly, this is still okay. Maybe this year. You, you just see the dry picture using 
okay ICT or computer tools. Maybe this is in a raw hand, but they try to draw this thing. So you just see how they switch over with the nature, with their understanding, with their text. And we, we can just innovate some sort of thing. So our every children will start to learn from their own. But the teacher and parents have a very, a very good role for doing that. Otherwise, they will not do it. Because this is a forum. We can think something new. How can we start to our deliberation where children far from me, but you will able to explore a lot of things with their ideas using their environment. Uh, and ultimately, uh, they told, uh, they did a drama in their home with the help of their parents and brothers. Uh, and uh, in last meeting, we talked about it with Patricia. Uh, she is a really very good teacher. Uh, she worked with the drama. And in my country, I started to work with the children in their home. So the thing is that, how should we increase our creativity? How should we make our children to think newly with a joyful environment within their home? Now, I would like to make a conclusion because I'm eagerly waiting to listen to other honorable speakers, those who are really very learned and they have a very good ideas and thinking about uh, education and how to disseminate it all over the world. Uh, really, um, this uh, Bangladesh chapter opened a good door for the teachers and other people to participate, to share their ideas. If we just stagnant with uh, old ideas, maybe we cannot overcome this. You know, uh, policy maker, educator and other people think separately, but we need a hub where everything will be discussed and thereby we can able to think how should we accommodate all the ideas to our environment. That's why we can get some new ideas. Even uh, today we have the scope to accommodate our idea with the friends from abroad because they have also a very beautiful idea with their uh, culture, with their context. And we have to share uh, this thing with them. Now I just show two examples. Uh, really, this is very good uh, example where we can uh, show them some idea through Zoom and we can allow them to think with that and we can give them tasks to share it through Zoom or other media. Uh, uh, one day I talked with a student of KG school and uh, I was talking about the drawing and their environment. Uh, really very, very good uh, reflection I got from them. They were drawing, they were criticizing other uh, baby from other corner, but ultimately they are giving suggestion. Oh, this is very good. What do you mean by those things? What are these things? But we have to carefully consider the age and the level of the children. So I think uh, it will help us uh, to think newly, what should we do? And uh, Bangladesh government, I, I like to thank uh, government, uh, especially the Minister of Education. She told in this COVID situation, children should learn, but we will not go to give them pressure for the exam. Sir, you're remaining so one minutes. You're remaining okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing within this one minute. Thank you, Mamutas. Okay. Uh, so she is really very good. And in one workshop, I was working there, how we can reform our education, how we can just introduce uh, inquiry-based learning, project-based learning, and so other things in our classroom. This is very challenging as because you know, this is a very big country and our teachers are a diverse center. Diverse center. Uh, first speaker told uh, the teachers should need some training. And uh, you will be very happy to know that in Bangladesh, every teacher training college now have an honors course on education. Children are now going through that after uh, they have two days already coming out. Uh, maybe after five years, we'll got a very good teacher. With this same time, if the teacher start from his own, then he will be more powerful. Thank you very much for uh, patient sharing. Thank you, Mabutas. I'm going Thank to finish my lecture here. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry for that. Huh? Uh, this, is not, no, this is the norm. This is the norm. You should go in this way. Uh,
we could have been much richer if we had listened to you, but time is limited. I have nothing to say in sir space. I just want to learn and learn from sir. Sir Archmand, I do not have the ability to explain the strongest evidence. Sir is and will be with us, always guiding us on how we can build students while maintaining the quality of our education. So now I will, in this stage now, I will come to the elaborations, sir, uh, just elaborations, sir, about elaboration is a graduate teacher from India with the master's degree in mathematics. He has 19 years experience in teaching. He is an expert and Microsoft tools on two times national level award winner in project based learning competition. Moreover, he is also an ICT trainer program, videos, grammar and me, Mirori athletes. I, he's a Microsoft guest speaker in Ask MI Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert Program and Minecraft Global Mentors. He got selected for Microsoft Educator Exchange Meet in Sydney 2020. Please, elaboration, sir. Continue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so thank you very much. Hello, friends. Your time is 15 minutes. After 14 minutes, I will knock to you. Thank Please you. Please. Thank you. I got a note for my time. Thank you very much. Um, hello, friends. Um, namaste from India. As my friend Mamsa says about a lot about me, I'm commonly a graduate teacher and ICT trainer, programmer, athlete, and photographer. I have so many qualifications. Thanks for inviting me. It's a great honor to meet you all. This is my first time. Um, I know that uh, time is very scarce. So let us do directly go to the session. Let me share my screen. Today's topic is about uh, quality education. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes. Yes, thank you. Kindly wait a second. You can share your screen. Yes, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Yes. Your screen is visible. Yes. <laughs> Hello, friends. and. Uh, Today's topic is quality education, why it is matters right now, because it is the right time for me, because uh, my previous speakers has done an elaborate speech and had made very valid points about uh, what is the uh, quality education, why it needs, and he talks about the processes in their country, and I'm from India, some of your friends are here, and I'm from the southern part of my country, you know that India is a very vast country, just 13 states, so many. And actually, let us straightly go to the question. What do we mean by quality education? That's so simple. It's one of the fourth uh, SDG goal. So it's very simple. In the United Nations clearly said, ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education. If you want to say it in very layman language, so simple. We must ensure education to all. That is the first uh, definition. After that, we need to give some options or choices for affordable technical vocational training to make a complete development, holistic development for ordinary men. It's a very simple, simple word, but uh, we, you know that we are all teachers. We are here to make complicated things into very easily manner. So the simplest tools, right? So holistic development of all students with the knowledge and skill set, especially made for the future. Yes. What's right now? Uh, what is the necessity? Why the quality education matters? Because we all know that it is a basic foundation. We need public services in all our country. We all need the teachers, doctors, engineers. There are so many professions, and it may, can make global citizens, right? And more or less developed in you know that uh, fact. In a developed state, in European countries and Americas, there are approximately 79 percent of students are pursuing higher studies. But in developing nations, it's less than 50. You might know the facts. The thing is, pursuing higher studies, protection from poverty, exploitation, disease, and obtaining of skills, knowledge. These are all the quality education. It's very simple. Anybody can answer this. More than that, in 2015, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals has set it the fourth. Uh, uh, it's a goal. It has uh, more than eight. Uh, additional goals. For example, you see this fact, and uh, all of our country, 193 countries has been signed for it. Each and every every icon has got some unique meanings. So it is simple. 
the first logo clearly said free primary and secondary education in my country approximately um 70 more than 72 persons and in, in, in decade by decade it is improving in seven decades ago we have less than 10 percent of people are literate but right now we have been developed we can see the past so free primary and secondary education in southern part of the country somewhat far more better we are uh, providing government should provide that there is a delicate balance between public and private sectors equal access to um to genders you know that gender equality we should provide that and we should provide affordable technical vocation and higher education you might think you might get surprised he's showing some kind of pictures and he's showing some kind of goals there is no no relation between our school and these kind of goals it's very simple just i'm showing picture but my words are very simple for example we should provide free education we should give some kind of technical knowledge to them we can increase the number of relevant people with number of for example number of uh, people with addition further skills in my in our country we mention um differently differently abled people the the term differently abled people only for handicapped people we know that handicapped person will have some additional ability capabilities so like that we should include all those persons all those genders all those communities all those persons with special needs and we should eliminate all kind of discrimination in education universal literacy these are all the things you might know that but we should bear the common thing the thing is quality means inclusive all children providing free education and uh, uh, removal of gender bias and basic things there is no need for common uh, uh, 300 uh, 3000 word paragraph you will all know that so how is it related now is it relevant really i believe it is strongly relevant more than ever for example uh, for past decade somewhat there was uh, you might know the, the mdg millennium development goals in 2000 to 2015 after that 2015 to 2030 we are discussing about sustainable development goals in this pandemic session more than 90% of children are out of school right now for the past 9 9 months now i'm not only taking about the consideration about uh, india i'm talking about whole can all global level right and uh, more than anything you will see that even after uh, before uh, covid 19 more than 200 million children will still be out of school in 2030 because of this the time of quality education is more more visible more clarity more persistent is it's very necessary at this point of time and inequalities because of this inequality we need quality education that's it we are discussing about what is the purpose of this term what is the use of this term see it's very simple in low income countries you will see children come i have talked about a few few seconds before 17% developed countries or uh, students are pursuing higher studies 34% you can think it's uh, um, one third approximately and school clo- school closures 90% of all students right now so we have to do something and we are talking about remote learning some of my best friends are talking few seconds but they have talked about uh, technology remote learning but the p- problem is 500 million students are uh, out of reach for technology so how can we overcome this what are the possibilities of this in additionally uh, sir uh, uh, in the um, first speaker has said about the um, resources infrastructure that is very true in 65% of premier primary schools don't have the hand washing facilities in their campus what to do what kind of uh, these quality education provides how can we overcome this this is the way we can achieve quality education by following this quality education can be provided only by good teachers enabled with good teaching learning processes tools and technologies and conducive learning learning environment while talking about uh, conducive what is meant by conducive it means technology that's simple we have to have we are going for a war we have to have some weapons then only you can we can uh, fight in a war and we can win in the war right so the basic need is teachers um few seconds ago sir, sir has uh, uh, shown an experiment uh, and while seeing this i would like to show <laughs> for example this is a remote you see it's a common thing it can be used in any classroom 
for example technology is like a tool in the hands of a good teacher see for example this remote can be a science tool a science teacher can use this but not to worry a language teacher can use this how it's very simple because of some innovative ideas for example a language teacher can ask us uh, students to ask a few lines about this remote it's very simple how can a math teacher can use this math teacher can be more innovative right i am a mathematics teacher for more than 19 years i can ask my children uh, please children please uh, uh, measure this shape and size of uh, um, uh, cubic uh, cm of this uh, remote a science teacher they have large number of ideas what are the components of this remote but uh, what about social studies the thing is social studies can teacher ask the children to do what are the history um, geography what are the elements they can ask anything right the thing is there is no speciality in this remote the thing is the speciality in this it lies in our mind right so uh, technology is like this but a uh, teacher should inculcate some kind of curiosity further learning and some resources basic resources so these are the thing i would like to do share it with you so what can we do we should ask our governments because they are all policy makers we cannot build our own infrastructure for example i am located in tamil nadu it is a southern part of my country it is very vast in my in my um, locality they have got some regional centers and divisional centers and districts you know that more than 36000 schools in my state state me alone in my country there are more than lakhs of schools are there government cannot provide that so for that we are maintaining that public and private school system but our government has got a plan our government has maintaining some kind of uh, delicate balance between public and private sectors we have opened our schools for some minimal levels of infrastructure with the help of parents and public but the policy should be bear in mind it should be in the hands of policy maker so we should uh, we should en encourage our policy makers we should motivate our policy makers we should do a lot some more money that is a real problem <laughs> there is no ornamental words here we need resources for that we have to we need to motivate our policy makers government will do that because in a democratic country actually this is a vicious cycle an educated society can get uh, can can create a wonderful democratic society and wonderful democratic society can create a further fantastic educational society these are a very beautiful cycle i believe so this is a first step as teachers we can this is our duty we cannot in india there is no right for a teacher to enter in politics but we can motivate our superior or our um, um, elect electoral personalities or a member of parliaments to allot more money to build some additional infrastructure if we show our potential they will do the definitely and after that it will be used for the marginalized marginalized section and vulnerable section because government public schools can only do that so a few seconds ago some of my friends um steve chawa has said about more more of the government school don't have any facility that is very true but what we can do is we can show our potential we can approach our uh, our neighborhood we can collect our money because it's happening in tamil nadu because uh, in our country also there are separate more than 100 schemes are there in every government <laughs> they will announce the new schemes and they lot more money but with the very scarcity little resources we can do some marvelous things that's the thing and my personal opinion this is these are the best time to implement some kind of ict based solutions these are the two uh, suggestions you can do this because what are the ict based solutions we can pursue uh, mobile or open educational resources or e learning last week we have got a conference with japanese educators and thailand they have said about digital uh, e book in my country into from the 2016 we have we have built a digital repository of textbooks we don't know the reason but we have formulated a digital repository and we have connected all those teachers Uh, approximately 6 years ago now it is very useful you know that it is like a tree we plant the seed right now but the fruits of the tree will bear after that only uh, 10 10 years or 15 years we have done it 2014 or 15 but right we are having six types of uh, platform in india for example uh, tntp uh, diksha there are some uh, nroer these are all the common digital repositories right now there is no schools functioning in india but we connect the children through mobiles through internet and after that you may ask uh, 
more are the students in my school don't have mobile phones. For example, in my school, my students are more than 350. In 350, only uh, 150 students are having mobile smartphones. Others are having television. So our government uh, last uh, year asked, uh, has inaugurated 32 uh, uh, individually unique selected or uh, unique selected television channels, especially for uh, education. For example, K1 to K12. There are more than um, 16 television channels, especially for uh, education. And e-learning, you can use digital repositories. These are the very best ideas. And furthermore, uh, there are some good ideas for you. But there are a global uh, level coalitions. We have to participate in like this one. For example, a few minutes ago, my friend said, David, we can uh, connect our classroom. We can share our resources. For example, I'm an ICT coordinator, ICT trainer. I can guide you how to use your video games in your classroom very wonderfully. In my classrooms, there are 150 students. But unfortunately, you're remaining not time is four minutes. You're remaining time is four minutes. Sure, ma'am. I'll be finishing exact time. Not a problem. I'll do that. Yes. Uh, these yes, are all the things. Yes, we can uh, share our resources with the global coalition teams. And what is the role of technology in quality education? Technology in school, main thing is we can collect, we can access, we can analyze, present and transmit information very quickly, very easily, very usefully. That is the main thing. So automatically the quality will be improved. The resources are number one, for ICT integration is number two, that's it. And as teachers, what we can do we can do five steps. For example, learning. The teacher should learn something. Engage, empower, learning through technology. Technological tools are more important. Teacher should learn it. After that, you, we should teach with technology. That's the second idea. We cannot, there is no alternative. Our sir has beautifully said, there is no shortcut for success. There is no royal road. Teacher should be a lifelong learner. He should learn a few tools regularly because tools come and go, it will fade few years away. After that, leadership. We have to build some leadership, create a culture of condition, innovation. That is very first. This is a third step. After that assessment, we should measure our development without any bias. After that infrastructure, that is very important. Infrastructure, it is in the hands of policymakers. We should motivate for that. Enabling access for effective use. These are all the things I would like to share it with you. That's, uh, that's really awesome. You are keeping very calm and you're being very patient. So right now, these are all the 2030 agenda. You may have a look at when you are fine time because the title is very awesome. You should have a good, uh, good uh, look at that. That's it. If you want to ask anything, I'll be here. I'm very glad to answer your questions. Namta ma'am? Uh, elaboration, elaboration, sir. I have a, uh, yes, sir. Can I ask you questions? Sure, sir. Welcome, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Omar Shaiful Islam from Bangladesh. Yes, I'm secondary sir. education yes, officer. <laughs> my question Thank is, you, why does yes. Quality teaching became an issue yes. of importance in secondary and higher education in this 21st century. Because we are in a very dire need, sir. We have to move forward because for the past 70 years, I'm talking about from the past seven decades, we developed a lot, but the world is moving very fastly. See, I have uh, lots of books on my shelf, but with my Apple iPhone, I can download more than thousand books within a second. Even after nine, even my bedtime, 11.30, even at the time I'm looking at something. See, uh, for example, while I'm moving in the bus or moving in the car, I'm discussing with my children. I create some drawings for my children. Can you see this? Because I have limited time. The world is moving very fast. I can, I can a picture can uh, tell a story of uh, um, uh, some engineering goods within seconds. So, for example, uh, you will see the TV commercials. They just uh, run for only 10 seconds. But the kids remember the uh, commercials more than anything. They forgot the Max formula also, but he will tell about the whole commercial. Like this, we need to innovate ourselves, sir. That is a very need at the remote learning time. Because of this, I believe this is a hard time for us. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Your time is over. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And dear friends, thank you for being with me. Thanks for being with me. If you have any questions, you can ask me there. And uh, if you want any kind of ICT training, I'll be very glad to help. Mamtaz ma'am will share my number and um, other uh, informations. And take care of yourself because it's a COVID time. You have to be stay safe, uh, stay strong, motivate your children to do some work good. Thank you very much and namaste from India. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, Eleven Shan, sir. Um, sir, we will hear your speech on today's topic remarks. We understand that a strong statement on quality education will surely help our teachers and students to meet the challenge of the 21st century. Thank you, sir. Uh, the audience notable, um, I have submitted a feedback from Please, everyone, filled in my feedback form. In chat box, I have submitted in chat box uh, my feedback form. Uh, please notable that uh, I will allow audience questions after our speaker speech delivery. Okay. Now I will come to the Patricia Arbona. Bruna Seria from Argentina. She is a drama, a drama learning theater specialist. Uh, please, Patricia Arbona. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning. No, good evening, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, good Remind morning. it, your time is 15 minutes. After 14 <laughs> minutes, I'll knock to you. Patricia, okay. please. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. I, I'll be brief. Um, well, can I share uh, the screen, please? Well, I'm very glad to be with you all. Can I? Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm getting ready. All right. Oh, yeah. Here I am. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, today the topic is the topic of discussion requires our greatest attention. Um, everybody dreams of quality education. Uh, parents for their children, uh, teachers for their students, uh, leaders for their future generations, companies for their future staff. The thing is that when we think of quality education, uh, we educators should focus on um, the teaching methodologies that can successfully help our students develop the necessary skills uh, that are required in the 21st century. Um, the idea is that um, uh, quality education is a key factor in human development and it is our greatest global challenge. Um, we are undergoing um, a pandemic crisis and uh, in spite of this, uh, we are transforming um, our, our, our environment into something completely different in order to, to have better lives. And um, during COVID-19, we uh, have been working on education more than ever before. Uh, and I think that we'll go on working as hard as we have been doing it because um, we are committed to true uh, quality education. Um, and besides, uh, everybody knows that education is uh, the most powerful investment in our future. Um, well, uh, we know that um, the question that we need to ask now uh, is what is quality education? Well, it is a type of education uh, that um, is pedagogically and developmentally sound and intends to help students reach their own potentials and become active uh, and creative members of society. Teaching and learning are intimately related and they form a binomial. They are intrinsically linked. It is like speaking and listening. They cannot be separated. And, the, and, and teachers are key uh, elements to quality education because they orchestrate the, um, the learning opportunities for students. Now, it is interesting to know uh, the key elements of quality education, which of course uh, help to improve it. Uh, first, teachers and teaching methods. Uh, we know that um, the, the, the impact that teachers have on every student and their uh, they are learning and this has to do with their attitude huh? they have when they are in the classroom. Um, 
here we need to ask several questions. Are they properly trained? Uh, are they personally suited? Are they using uh, uh, the appropriate uh, methodologies in order to allow students to become active participants? We know that um, many, in many countries, schools are already implementing active methodologies uh, which allow the students uh, become um, part of the process of learning so that they uh, have experiential learning because they, they, uh, they live what they are learning. And this is essential. They are no longer passive receivers of information. They, they, they become um, active uh, actors. Um, then uh, educational content. Well, um, here, what are the questions? Are the curriculum and the teaching material relevant? Does the curriculum also highlight basic needs like hygiene, nutrition, uh, um, knowledge of, of AIDS and other diseases, gender equality, and other important national and international issues? Um, when we come to uh, equality and equity, um, it is important to make the distinction between the two because they are often used interchangeably. So if we understand the difference between them, we will be able to uh, help uh, those disadvantaged students which are present in our classrooms. Um, uh, equality in a classroom means that every student has the same opportunities, resources, and um, and chances. And um, on the other hand, equity uh, refers to a principle of fairness. Every student uh, uh, should have the opportunity for success. And equity provides every student uh, with the resources which fit their circumstances. Uh, then preconditions for students. This is very important because we need to know the type of students we are having in, in, in each particular group of students we are having in the different schools. We should remember that each group is unique and is made up of students who have uh, specific characteristics which define the group they belong to. So um, in this sense, it is important to know um, they are, uh, to know about their homes, about uh, their families, uh, about the activities they do outside school, and um, also the type of questions that we, we need to ask here is what experiences uh, do they bring when they come to school, for example, um, have they been exposed to special challenges, for example, to um, natural diseases, abuse, child labor, um, are they hungry when they come to school? Uh, do any of them suffer from chronic diseases? These are important um, uh, pieces of information that will um, that that are necessary in order to enhance the relationship that we establish uh, in each group of students we have. Um, another important. Um, is, ah, I, I forgot, I, I, I skipped school management. Uh, school management um, refers to uh, questions such as, is the, is the school well run? Um, is the, um, the school day well organized? Is the, the, the principal a boss or a leader? This is very important because um, a boss and a leader perform completely different roles. Mm -hmm. um, a school leader uh, should not control the staff. On the contrary, all teachers together with the principal should work together and they should share their experiences in order to solve the, pro the, the problems that may be present every single day. Um, a boss usually control uh, their workers. And this is not good because uh, rapport, the, that is to say, this special uh, understanding that is usually created between teachers and principals and also between teachers and, and students, it cannot be, cannot be built hmm? because this type of, of control that is uh, exerted. 
um, well, uh, funding uh, an organization, well, this is uh, mainly a national responsibility. And when a school is not granted adequate funding and has no clear guidelines, will not be able to ensure quality. However, every school um, should uh, administer its own resources the best they can. Well, um, it is also important to consider the six A's of quality education. And uh, uh, the first one is assessment. Benchmark assessment, which follow the student's progress and identify the gaps um, in curriculum and instructions are very important to improve the quality of education. Um, countries that are unable to determine where their education system stands currently will find it difficult to make improvements or to reach their goals. Autonomy. Empowering schools will determine quality improvements. This includes giving them ownership, resources, and voice while enhancing school competencies. Accountability is closely related to autonomy. Accountability increases time on task and academic achievement. As decision-making power is redistributed, local authorities, school principals, teachers, and students are given new responsibilities for resource deployment and school activities. And, and in this case, I need to emphasize the fact that families should be involved uh, in the schools their children belong to, because education and uh, families are closely related. Schools and family should work together to improve the quality of education too. Uh, this, uh, by this I mean that um, family uh, cannot ignore that we are in a process of transformation in education and uh, quality education is our main aim really. Well, uh, then attention to teachers. Um, a good teacher is the one that adds values uh, to the learning process. Uh, teaching then becomes their vocation and their mission. For this reason, it is very important to consider the type of instruction that is given at teacher training colleges. Students there should be given the necessary information and they should develop the special skills uh, in order to be able to, uh, to help their future learners become successful learners. Um, when they start uh, teaching uh, for the first time, of course, that they have doubts that they, they need experience. For this reason, those teachers who have got more experience should support them, should help them, should guide them. For this, it is important that we should get together uh, the staff of teachers that belong to the same school should get together, but also with uh, teachers from other schools. Remember that transformation in education is possible only if we work together, mm? because in this way, um, we share experiences and we can improve our own practices. And if we are able to improve our own teaching, we will be able to improve quality education. They are, they are all connected. Then uh, attention to early childhood de uh, development. This is very important. Why? Because empirical evidence demonstrates that quality early uh, childhood development intervention increase educational success and adult productivity. And then attention to culture. And this is restricted to those countries in which there are groups of students who believe to who belong to uh, indigenous uh, groups of people. Uh, uh, it usually happens that uh, they are not taught their native tongue. At least it happens in my country. Mm, we have uh, this type of groups, and the language that they learned is Spanish, and this is not their original <coughs> language. And uh, well, we are trying to uh, to to include their native tongue, because if they learn how to use uh, their native tongue and the culture that is closely related to, the, to, the, to, uh, to their native tongue, they will be able to preserve their native tongue, which is part of our culture, is part of our country. That's why this is so important. Well, 
Uh, Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. That's why we need to go on working together. We need to go on um, creating um, educational bonds uh, in order to ensure quality education. Uh, and uh, our work on quality education uh, becomes more challenging when we realize that the future is in our classrooms. So there is no time to lose. Mm? The future is in our hands. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, Patricia. I will. Uh, I will allow uh, after my speaker a speech delivery. Uh, please finish your speech. Your speech is over. Yes, Patricia? I have finished. That's why, that, that's why now I, the rest of the time is uh, is um, related to questions. If anyone may uh, ask questions, can I? Related, I, 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 I want related, to... related questions. I will allow after speaker speech delivery. Okay. Ah, after everybody. All right. Well, so I have finished. Okay. Thank you, Patricia Bruna, Thank for you. your grateful and kind words. Um, we will hear your space on today's topics, remarks, understand. Uh, surely we will understand that a strong statement of quality of education will shine in the formation of a development nations and our future learner. Thank you again. Uh, now I would like to request Mr. Shondip sir, uh, Shondip Maloya from India. Uh, he's motivational speaker yes. and trainer, uh, teachers and learner. Please, from this, sir, continue your space delivery. Good evening to one and all who are on this platform today. I would like to thank Mumtaz ma'am and each and everyone who are here taking some special time and waiting eagerly to listen from one another, sharing your ideas and empowering ourselves and energizing ourselves. I really thank to all of you. Now, what I would like to say here is quality education. If you see, if you see very clearly, coconut trees are always grown near the seashore. They cannot grow in the central part of any land. Correct? Coconut trees are always grown near the seashore because the soil does not permit the central part of the country to allow the seed of coconut to grow correctly. In the same way, the parents and the teachers are fully responsible for the complete development of the child. We, are we as teachers are molding and completely working on them in the school. On the other side, the parents should support us. That is the first step which we should take to make the parents aware about it. Now, quality education comes from a quality teacher. Now, a quality teacher should have so many qualities, if you say, as all the speakers just now said, Patricia Ma'am said that a teacher should be very considerate. She should be looking into the deep drowning place from where the child is coming, his physical condition, his disease problem, his excellent awareness, what kind of games he's taking, what disease if he's suffering from, is he having enough money to do the a homework or to get the materials which the teacher is asking to bring. These all things a teacher needs to know before taking any action against the child or a group of child. The quality education starts from the base. If you see, as a parent, if you select a school, what do we see in a school? We generally see three to four things. What kind of school it is? How many students are there? How is the infrastructure? How is the building? Is the building hygienic or not? When we see all the building infrastructure is observed very clearly, then we go towards the class teachers. How are the teachers in the school? Are they qualified? What is the feedback from other parents about the teachers? Are they cooperative? Can that teacher of that school inspire his kid or not? These are the things. Then how much fees do they charge? Is it very high? very low or it's medium. Next comes, do they have sufficient materials with them? The school can provide all the materials. If yes, then only we intend to put the child over there. If these things, if these necessities or the characteristics are not matched, 
we try to go to some other school for the same now these things quality education comes also from the exception the development of a child just teaching the syllabus or just completing the syllabus or imparting the syllabus to the child is not sufficient over there the necessity is a child should know how to communicate how to listen how to express his ideas in public just not within the group of school where he is sitting he should know how to express communicate also in his society with his family members and when he is alone on the street going to buy something he should know the art of communication this can be done only by a excellent teacher a gold chain you might have seen a gold chain has so many loops in it correct a small small loops are connected by one after the other and it forms a very big chain in the same way if all the teachers like if one teacher is very good in a school she can impart the best knowledge but if due to some teachers who are not inducive in this thing the whole school platform goes down the development of the child also goes down but when all these teachers like a loop of chain when they are connected if there are 40 teachers and every 40 teachers connect like a loop holding hand in hand without any ego in themselves learning from the co colleagues imparting our knowledge to other colleagues and they uplift the whole child from in each and every subject in each and every corner like not only speaking his ideas of thinking how he listens how he walks how he present himself how he has his body language all these things are mattering at that time so my desire is that we should learn we as teachers should cooperate in our own school atmosphere and develop a child completely not just in certain areas we being a teacher we should merge together and see the corners where we are lacking where our school foundation is lacking one teacher cannot change the whole universe but a group of teacher can change a small society a small village and that small village can change the city and that city can change the whole country so in the step by step formation we all can change ourselves another thing is which we need to study today regarding the pillars today our education before the pillars i would like to say what are the challenges of quality education or our education sectors are facing the first is shortage of quality qualified teachers qualified teachers are there but their imparting knowledge their experience is not there you we know that one medicine ordinary pain killer can remove the body pain from our body but to a certain extent if the pain is persistent if a child is doing mischief persistently you cannot change him or her by one and the same tablet you have to change the strategy a teacher has to have that intelligence a teacher should understand a child very clearly that what changes we need to make in ourselves so that we can transform the kid so it is necessary to understand a child properly next goes lack of teaching materials a school or we ourselves should have complete stock of good materials we should be going on hunting sir said before a teacher is never going to stop learning till our death our our last breath we are always going to learn one or the other thing and we will not just learn from the level of our age students or level of age of our friends or colleagues we will learn many things from our students also because our students teach us many many things if you observe them very carefully the thing is overcrowded classroom next question overcrowded classroom is another big issue where the management goes on filling up the student and overcrowded classroom a teacher can look after only 20 students at the most 20 students concentratingly it can look but when the crowd increases it becomes difficult for his or her also to focus on every child next is the quality of education which we are imparting to them what we are teaching how we are teaching and what we do with them in front of them reflects the attitude as a teacher i will say when we enter our classroom what do before we open our mouth what happens is the first part is that they look at our dress they look at our physical at atmosphere how we are looking the physical appearance how we are carrying our books how we are talking how we are wishing them do we wish them with energy or not 
if we are wishing them with energy they are very happy if we are wish, wishing wishing them with just a casualness next day they also become casual with it it lands up in a casualty so it is more necessary before we open our mouth our physical appearance should be very very perfect our walking attire our dresses should be correct our walking style should be correct our book carrying method should be correct. we carry carelessly they learn the same because they are 40 and they have got 80 eyes watching on us whereas we have got only two eyes we are looking at them and we are looking at a specific child but they all are looking at us and they are after we go away from that atmosphere they all sit and discuss about the same how we are doing i used to put my id card like this and i used to put my id card in my pocket on the first year of my school after one and a half one one and a half year i saw that the students started putting their id card in the pocket the principal asked me sir you are doing it other students are doing it so you start putting your id card outside down so i learned one thing that they are following me so i removed my id card put it hanging on my chest and all the other students also started putting it so they are very close watchers they have a very good perception and eyes with us we have to care first make our physical appearance very strong very perfect very positive in the thing next come is the content how we teach a quality education as we said it's a creativeness right creativeness as much as we put in it how many stories how many other topics you put in it but it is necessary to engage them if we are having a lecture just now over here for 40 minutes two hours three hours whatever it is if my physical body is not engaged in writing or i am just going on listening i'll have a problem after some time after 15 30 40 minutes i will be bored with it I, my physical engagement is not there so whenever we are in the classroom or we are teaching some topics to them it is necessary to make them physically active you can make them write some key words over there when they are doing it it makes them physically active it brings them from that at physical atmosphere when they get engaged in this thing they are out with it and they are with you. There should be a lot of humor with them. When humor is there, they are all happy, they are smiling and they start following you. When they follow you, they will be with you, they will be loving your subject and they will start studying, they will start also doing your homework. We teachers face a lot of problem with homework. We always scream behind them, the homework is not done, homework is not done, books are incomplete. That is because they don't love that subject. The love can be created for that subject if they fall in love with us. But we have to remember that we should have a line between a student and a teacher. That line should always be maintained. And to make them love you, it is necessary to make it more impressive, more deliberate and more punching for them. When it becomes more punching, they are always with you. And when they be with you, they will listen to you very properly and they will be addicted to you. Another thing, as I said, first, coconut tree never grows in the middle of the country, correct? Coconut tree always grows on the shore, seashore, you can say, correct? We have to also see a parent, what kind of parent he has got. I knew one student, you know, he was, the child was scoring out of 60 marks, the child had scored only 41 marks. I told you, but less marks. The parent said, no, no, it's okay. Now, once the parent said it is okay, the child had a very good mental attitude when I said to the child, my father is satisfied. Why should I struggle more? My mommy is satisfied with my 41 marks. Why should I struggle more? So that's a full stop for me. Now I cannot go more, more ahead. I cannot push that child. So we have to see that what kind of parents, what kind of atmosphere, what kind of feedback are the parents feeding the child? If we understand that feedback, we can easily uplift the child more fast. Next goes the conclusion. Our first was physical appearance. Second was the content. What we talk, how we talk, how we engage a child while telling our, completing our syllabus, you can say. Next comes the conclusion. We generally, as a teacher, what we do is we take a lecture of 40 minutes. At the, when the bell rings, still we are on the verge of completing our lecture. But we make a mistake, my dear friends, over here. I feel and I think this thing is very important. When we take a lecture, we should divide our lecture into certain minutes. For first two, three minutes, we talk with them. Hi, hello, wishing them. Second part, we conclude. We start our lecture. And at the end of five minutes, we give or ask them questions of what we had taught earlier. And at the end, before going, we give them and ask them okay, what we will do tomorrow. 
when they are asked what we will do tomorrow they are so happy they jump up and say ki bhai tomorrow we will do this tomorrow we will do that they make all different plans so the mind is set tomorrow when they come they have got the idea sir we have to do this thing or we have to do that thing so that engagement will come back from there also with us no matter youtube all channels are there for us media is there everything is there but this engagement is very very necessary for today's generation next goes the feedback which we had we should teach them the moral values and planning if we have a good system of planning if we teach them to plan they can plan their future well we teach the syllabus we complete with our syllabus but we never teach them the, the, as to teach ma'am said just now art of communication listening all these things are never taught these things we should imply with these things we should teach them we should teach them to plan how to plan the subject how many days are left for their academic exam how many subjects are there how many chapters are there how to divide them which subject to take first which part to do with the hard or the fast they are all muddled up and confused they can never understand how to move and where to move so this is what i would like to say and at the end one important topic which i would like to say is regarding the adults and the change in the body when a child need reaches the age of 10 or 11 the child starts developing in a different way his physical body changes up till now i have seen many meetings and everything i have seen the parents are not at all considerate about it they are considerate but to a certain extent not 100% what i would like to suggest here i and my all friends and all colleagues who are on this platform today that we should take a special separate the girls separate the boys teach them the changes in the body physical body the differences which develop in the youth because they hold themselves they are frightened to speak if they find some changes in their body they think it's abnormal what is happening in them and they are confused with it they are confused they hold themselves the communication line is broken up and they are the level of stress increases very fast and due to that the academic is affected i suggest that we should consider this topic also a very important topic of adolescence and the change in the body of a female or a boy which takes place during that time to the conclusion i will just tell one story i think i am running out of time it's already 13 minutes i'll just take one minute it this story is for the teachers some years back in england some years back in england there was a small boy in senior kg junior kg he was scoring 90% marks 90 95 98 very top very top scorer ultimately what happened when he reached to he lost his father at the age of when he was in first standard he lost his father after losing his father he was mentally disturbed his result fell down in first standard second standard it fell down third standard when he came he lost his mother when he after losing his mother his result again started falling down in fourth standard he met a teacher like very good very intelligent very smart teacher like patricia ma'am you can say who was understanding the child very properly she understood the child she dug back the results of senior kg junior kg first standard second standard and she understood exactly what the problem was he was scoring behind very good marks but today he is down then she worked on him for many years the boy became a very good student at when he co co completed his 10th grade he was one of the topmost and the first student in the whole school where he was good in senior kg junior kg fell down in first and second standard in 10th standard he was the first in the whole school after that in high grades he became the topmost in the city he uh, he was awarded on a national level also after that time when he got he fell in love with a ma in, with a girl he was appointed as a very good officer in one of the biggest companies and he decided to invite somebody for his marriage he was getting married to the girl who love whom he loved when he was going to marry that girl he thought of inviting whom as his mother at last he remembered that teacher he called that teacher he went to her house during the, when he was in his study time he used to gift the teacher the favorite perfume she loved the favorite shawl she loved these were the gifts when he had given to her in her childhood when he grew more old at the end and the end time of his marriage in the church when all the three were sitting there the girl the boy came to the teacher and they were talking within themselves the teacher said my dear child i am very happy that because you came in my life the teacher said to the child my dear child when you came in my life so many years back i understood Sorry, you sir your your remaining time just 2 minutes Yes yes
I'll just complete the story. Yeah. Okay. The teacher said, "My dear child, you came in my life. I understood the art of teaching. I understood how to dig back and come to the child and explain and explain his importance. And I changed you. And today you have changed. But it's very surprising what the boy said to the lady. The boy said to the teacher that, "Teacher, you changed my life." But at the end, the teacher once again said, "My dear, if you wouldn't have come in my life." if you wouldn't have come in my life i would be a just an ordinary teacher you changed my life completely on that day if you didn't come in my life i wouldn't have understood that i should dig so much deep inside the grave and see what is there in you i did that because you were the child who changed my total life and gave me a chance to become a world's best teacher that's all and thank you ruksana ma'am and everybody on this platform for being here listening to me Once again, a special thanks to Mumtaz Ben. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shundip sir. I know Shundip sir. Our teacher have learned a lot from our statement. Uh, your statement. Uh, hopefully, teachers will be able to apply it in their professional field. We are really grateful for your logical uh, and informative uh, speech delivery. We will try our best to use our uh, your words in our education sector and. our future learner thank you shandeep sir uh, in this stage the space of our speakers are over now it's the audience turn to questions if anybody wants to ask the questions you can ask the questions by name please audience yes i want to ask a question Dear Sonora Sir, please your questions. Raise your question. Yes. Your sir. Huh. I have a questions. Can I ask? Uh, please, if anybody wants to ask the questions, you can ask the questions by name. Our speaker will ready. Okay, thank you very much. I am from uh, Bangladesh. My district is Bola. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thanks to uh, Mamtaz Roksana Attar, Madam, for your nice arrangement. Actually, uh, I haven't missed a single minute uh, from of you as uh, the speakers speech. All of the speakers uh, spoke uh, very nicely, but, but my question is to. Our uh, Patricia, madam, uh, she uh, presented a, a slide, a presentation how we can achieve uh, a quality education. So, uh, please, ma'am, please, will you tell uh, in short one within one or two minutes how we again uh, because uh, as this is the first time uh, I haven't get a clear and accurate idea. If you tell again, repeat it. Uh, how we can achieve the quality among us as a teacher uh, in one or two minutes? I will be grateful to you. Please, Mr. Chairman. I help you. Okay, now sorry. <laughs> uh, well, um, quality education is the responsibility of the whole society, but we as educators should focus on the teaching methodologies. that can successfully help our students to develop the knowledge and skills that are required for the 21st century we should remember that teaching and learning uh, form a binomial one depends on the other it is like speaking and listening we cannot speak if listening is not present so that's why they form a binomial they are intimately related and the teacher is um, the key component to quality education because she orchestrates the learning um, opportunities for students for this reason we need to be passionate teachers and teaching should be our mission and our vocation otherwise it is impossible to work on uh, quality education if we are not uh, really involved in what we are doing all the people here are really uh, committed to improving education and we have been working for a long time 
and we can already see some results because active methodologies are already being implemented and the, the results are really impressive. Even the students can give their own opinions the way they are progressive, progressing. Why? Because they are no longer passive receivers of information. They become active participants and in this way they can apply what they learn in real life situations. This is our mission to help them give uh, acquire the right strategies in order to become autonomous. This is one of our ultimate aims, to make them autonomous. But in order to be autonomous, they need to work together because uh, learning is a social activity. So first, learning together uh, will help them become autonomous. And this is also part of improving quality of education. We still have classrooms in which the students learn independently. Mm? and they do not share what they learn. And without sharing, the uh, learning is not possible. Okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you, you madam. Thank you, Patricia. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Questions? All right. I have another question to Shundeep, sir. Will you allow me? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yes. yes, you can. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, the story you have told at last, it was really hard touching. Uh, you told uh, when at the marriage ceremony of that boy, uh, he heard, uh, he uh, asked her teachers uh, as uh, to take part in his program as his mother. So from this speech, actually, we, we always think that we are a teacher, but we never think that we, we may be a guardian, we, we may be a part of our, uh, of part of our uh, student's life. That's really amazing. But uh, uh, we look uh, suggest me one or two points how we can uh, win the mind of our students uh, by affectionate or uh, quality education. In which way we should go forward to our students so that they can accept us from their heart. This is a very difficult path, actually. To make it very easy, it goes like this. When you start joking with them, when you start making humor with them and talking to them, asking them about their personal life, but you should, when you go more close to them, they start opening to you. In a way that then opening makes, gives you a way, ask them questions instead of asking, instead of telling them stories. We should not tell them more stories. We should make it more in a question form. Instead of criticizing them, Give them an appreciation for every small thing. Even if they are holding a pencil in a nice way, tell them it's a beautiful way of holding the pencil. That encourages them. They love, start love, falling in love with you. And when they fall in love with you, put humor in your thing. Talk in a double language. When you're talking, like, see, if I said like this, Oh, very nice it is. When you, one sentence goes in the, one word is in the mother tongue also. It changes, it changes the sweetness of that sentence. The child gets attracted to you. I'll say one sentence, it's a word is in Hindi. Like, there are 5 kg of onion on the table. There are 5 kg onion on the table. Now, what happened? The whole class is listening to me. They are all attentive. I said, there are 5 kg onion on the table. And I said, after that, instead of saying onion, I say in Hindi, there are 5 kg of kanda on the table. Now, what happened? They are distracted with that word kanda when it came. Kanda is a English, Hindi translation of English, correct? But that change in the sentence, change in that word attracted them so much that they started making fun of it. Oh, sir ne ye bol diya. Sir said in this way. So that humor automatically adds. That can bring you more close to the child. Ask them questions instead of giving them a direct speech over anything. Okay, that means you were saying that we should at first learn from the, our students. At first, we yes. should listen to them, what they want to, to know, what they want to say. And you are saying that uh, we should use some attractive uh, words so that they can participate uh, with me. That's, that's the yes. right yes. Word. Attractive words and attractive plus funny words. It should be like smiling. Okay. It should okay. be like a smile on them. Thank, thank you. you thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mom thank, thank you. Thank you also. Thank, thank you. Thank you also. Uh, does anyone else wants to ask any questions to yes. our? Yes, yes. Mom, may I like to ask a question? Yes. Hello. You can. 
yes 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 you can thank you thank you uh, i i would like to ask a question to miss priyanka srivastava ma'am uh, hello priyanka ma'am priyanka are you there priyanka are you there uh, priyanka may be not uh, she is also joined another session our nepal session so another speaker uh i want to ask uh, sandeep malviya sir again because yes, yes. i liked his story very much uh, sandeep sir are you there sandeep yes. malviya ji yes sir yes, yes. Uh, sandeep ji i would like to ask a question uh, what is uh, your unique experience uh, uh, during covid 19 pandemic means what is a particular opportunity you got from covid 19 pandemic Huh. openly and frankly saying during this covid i learned how to use the laptop more perfectly more better i started learning the apps <laughs> on the mobile like video shooting editing the videos honestly you know, during bakri eid was there i took 3 days just to edit one small video of 2 minutes that app was so difficult for me filmora go it is called i downloaded that app i was working on it it was a headache for me 3 days from morning till evening i was sitting on it but i could not edit one video also but then i understood one thing you know instead of beating my head using my head i thought like a student why not go to some mentor i opened the youtube i saw i clicked tutorials for filmora go i got the tutorials and from the tutorials i started editing and within 3 hours i edited that complete video so this one thing and the best another part which i learned during this pandemic is i got connected to this platform the mumtaz madam from uh, the teachers group world teachers meeting was there from that group and today i am in front of you or if this pandemic wouldn't have been there we all wouldn't have been here and i also wouldn't have been knowing any of you over here it's thank really you, a very good time a bad time yes. what a good time thank you thank you sir thank you sir i will take two more questions thank you, thank you. Thank you. in this stage i will take two more questions uh, because it's too late uh, does anyone else wants to ask any questions yes ma'am this is shubhodara yes. choudhury yes ma'am yes, i would can. like to say something to our speaker uh, thanks uh, first of all i would like to thanks the host or uh, coordinator of we bangladesh uh, mumtaz rukhana ma'am thank you for your organi organization actually i have a question to our uh, shondip sir and at the very beginning of my question i would like to uh, thanks him for his outstanding speech actually sir i have a question to you that you have mentioned in your speech that uh, sometimes we have to face some drawbacks some difficulties in our classroom atmosphere actually if we face the classroom which is larger in size how can we ensure our quality education please i would like to uh, take some suggestions from you sir shondip sir yes yes for this thing i will say only one thing you should first of all before you, the year starts you should understand the roll numbers names of the child and you should divide the class into two or three groups a grade b grade and c grade that is A grade is with the ninety, ninety one, eighty percent scorers. The first part, second part will be in the middle part, and the last part will be the which are failing students. If you divide them correctly, you know, and then you should also go to the older teacher. If that is the eighth grade, you should talk to the seventh grade teacher who was teaching there. You should ask them first only who was mischievous, who was doing more mischief, who was a troubleshooter over there. If you have all those homework today, like. sir had the whole statistics of india beforehand he came over here on the screen so he was able to do it we can be well prepared in the class and once you know the whole record of the class which student is going to trouble us which is not going to trouble us we will be centrally focused on those students then the 90% will never trouble us because and we should divide as i said divide your class when you divide your class time wise 15 minutes 20 minutes for explanation and all you should divide some writing assignments also writing assignment once given the good students will be engaged in writing the troubled shooters will be creating the troubles so your class is already divided the person who are writing and a best student they will be doing their work 
they will not disturb you so your focus is divided and you are completely giving 100% to the trouble shooters you will have to just focus on those trouble shooters i feel thank i have you, satisfied sir. your answer sir yes sir thank you thanks for your nice presentation so actually thank you mumtaz ruksana sir ma'am for your kind consideration i would like to thank through this uh, program our honorable uh, secondary education officer that is our saiful sir actually i must say i cannot but thank uh, give to you because he has initiated a virtual class in this pandemic crisis so through this program i must to him to you thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, in this stage i will take just one question does anybody else wants to ask your questions and watching the full video the video will be done sir hello are you there joseph sanwar sir from india uh, hello are you there yes yeah, ma'am uh you wants to say something please carry on uh ma'am hello thank you ma'am rukhsana ma'am yes. uh, uh question to patrika ma'am what is the role of leaders in this pandemic for school and students too ma'am what is the role of the ah, what sorry, is the role me? of Yeah. Repeat, please, the question. I didn't hear my name. That's why. One Did minute, ma'am. The, the role you mentioned, the role of uh, role of leader, school leader. What ah. is the role of school leaders in this pandemic? Okay. Particular school of yes. Well, yes. Uh, well, the role of the school leader in this pandemic is very is very special. because uh, in a way we need a leader in order to work properly and together uh, each institution um, has a leader normally but in this particular in this particular pandemic situation i think that we are all working together and the leader is part of the staff as i said before um, because all the problems that we are having at the moment Um, are not part of the of the leader the school leader everybody is responsible for the problems we are having and he becomes another member of the staff it is great because in this way we can create this special atmosphere in which everybody is working and we can solve the problems because what we have learned from this situation is that uh, we are not the same type of teacher we used to be before this pandemic crisis but there is something that this uh, pandemic has done to us and it has brought us together and this is very important because we have had to face a, a lot of difficulties because we were not used to working online in the way we are doing it now so all of a sudden we had to start learning many things that we ignored before so um, one of the uh, advantages of this type of work is that Uh, we are better prepared but at the same time uh, these uh, online uh, classes uh, has have taught us that they will never replace the physical classroom because what we need at the moment is to have contact with our students this a special uh, emotional atmosphere that is created in the physical atmosphere uh, however hard we try when we are in front of the screen is not possible to to be created so i think that uh, we are all leaders at the moment because we are uh, trying to solve every single every single problem we are having at the moment together and uh, they they are uh, present but in a way they are part of the whole group and and i think that this, this is the best way of working working together thank you very much back to see you uh, if no Matter one else has a question my nice response from you it is true hello who wants to say something hello 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 hello, hello. 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 hello.
this is Dr. Vaishali Tripathi from India. Yes. Uh, can I please ask a question? Yes, you can. Yeah. Actually, I just wanted to ask if anyone can answer this, uh, like the pandemic time is going on and online classes are also going. But at this moment, I'm seeing that uh, after seven, eight months, the kids are losing interest in online classes. And uh, I, I feel that uh, I want to ask what will be the role of uh, teachers and what will be the role of parents at this moment to handle those kids who are not uh, uh, taking interest in online classes because suddenly the interest is going. So what can a teacher do and what can a parent do? If anyone can please answer this question for me. Well, I think that I can answer if you let me, yeah, yeah, Mamta. Yeah, please, ma'am, please, yeah, please. Okay, I, I think that everybody is emotionally affected, especially children. We are not paying attention to children, and I mean students in general, not only children, also adolescents and uh, adult students who are at university or at college. They are having emotion, emotional problems because um, they are having problems in learning. They cannot learn properly because we are separated. And for example, in my case, I have trained students, students who are uh, at the uh, teacher training college, and they are given lots of material which cannot be discussed in the, in the ordinary classroom. Mm? Besides, the classes are shorter than usual. So they, they, they have to manage in one way or another. They cannot have the help the teacher usually gives when uh, they are in the, in the physical classroom. And children are especially emotionally affected because they need hugs, they need feedback, they need to be together with their peers and with the teacher. So learning cannot take place normally if all these elements are not present. So everybody is affected because we are affected too, emotionally too. And we are having great problems because communication is not fluent when we are uh, watching our students through a screen. But anyway, there is no, no further possibility. Everybody is undergoing the same emotional problem. And I understand uh, students, they are not longer interested in this type of uh, online classes because they cannot get what they need. And they feel that they are not learning. And we feel that, the, that we are not teaching. So in a way we are pretending teaching and they are pretending learning. And unfortunately, this is our present situation and uh, there is no further possibility. I think that when we go back to school, everything will change radically and we'll have the opportunity to teach and learn as we have been doing for ages. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I have, yeah. thank you ma'am. Can I have something really quick? Can I say something really, can I have the chance please? Yes. Uh, Doctor, yes. Uh, I would like to answer uh, Dr. Vishali Tripadi. Thank you Patricia ma'am, you have said it very clearly. The situation is not so favorable, I agree, because I'm, I'm, I'm facing the same situation. So to answer me, Vishali, I suggest in my locality, it is a remote village in India. So I am delivering online classes. As she said, it's lost interest, but I have changed the medium. And medium I would like to say is, I'm not taking the session regularly. Weekly once or twice, I'm, take, weekly once or twice, I'm taking sessions. After that, I'm change the tools. For example, on, on, once, at a, once in a week, I'm conducting game, game scan. After that, um, video sessions. After that, practical, um, practical, what should I say, models. That is really awesome. And once in 15 days, I go to my school regularly because as she said, my schools are, schools are completely closed, but students regularly attend my regular at online classes. Not in, I'm, I'm not saying about Microsoft Teams or Zoom. I just I'm using WhatsApp. All my students are present because I'm changing the concept into simple another tools by using, for example, one video session, one story session, one game session, one origami se session. For example, this is a new concept. This pandemic has opened lots of opportunities. See, I am now taking Portuguese okay. language for my government children. See, that's a new attempt. We can have more opportunity when we have more uh, innovation in our mind. Try to change the tools. For example, do not take continuously video, video lessons. Do not take games continuously. Because we, we are human beings, we need some variety of information. For example, one story, one song or poem, or in project-based learning, because I'm a project-based uh, uh, learning project winner two times. The main thing is I'm taking the whole session towards the children. Because once I asked the children, 
what is the reason for the water scarcity in your area what is the health problem in your area? they take 10 days to complete the session it's a additional uh, opportunity i am a math teacher but i am not holistically math and the whole time every day but i would like to ask something new something to share something new valuable something there should be something to learn new things right so try to change the topic uh, not to change the topic change the tools you need variety of tools in this time because these children has got number of distractions in their world for example uh, games it's a wonderful games minecraft is there kahoot is there once a time video games are there i our game sections are there and ruby cubes i am a memory athlete i can say hundreds of uh, thousands of pi digits in my school once uh, my previous speaker said uh, poor performing students are there but we should not allocate any student by saying directly poor performing we should motivate them to find out the real skill what are their real skill in their innate mind so this is my tech this is my technique hope you, this would be helpful to you ma'am thank you very much uh, ms vishali Uh, I Mama, I would like to say something. Raise his hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is very important question. How should we engage our children in interesting? Even we elderly people are bored doing same thing again and again. Now here are three issues. When parent is very near to the children, we have to do. here we are talking educators but we need a forum for the parents how they will guide them uh, and emotional change is very important right now uh, in in my presentation i told you that we have to change our mood of learning or we have to change the to engage them not through by zoom but we have to give them some tasks they will do in their family and that should be interesting something again if you just go for lecturing in my country what i watch many online classes are going on sometime they miss the link so they are not interested and teachers should be communicated with the particular children for that school otherwise the children will not be interested and in remote area there should be maintain some other voices for example i will just say if we just make a Materials and we will have to send them in their home, and we'll just give them a little instruction. They will do it in their home, but it need a lot of research. Right now, we need to motivate our parents how they will guide their children in the home. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. The audience question is over. Uh, uh, thank you, Boshani. <laughs> Thanks to okay. Uh, I have a question, uh, sir Shamsuddin Talukdar, sir. Uh, what are the characteristics of quality teaching, not quality education? Please, sir. Well, this is a very challenging thing. Uh, quality teaching. Teaching depends on what sort of student of... I am facing. Okay, okay, I'm telling you what sort of students I am facing. It depends on the first teacher should be. a person who will think every children is his own son or daughter otherwise he will not able to a cope with the children the teacher should plan before the class and he will have to think what happen after the class depending on that criteria he will manage his class in classroom we know there are a lot of methods but he have to find out which methods or the combination of the methods will be proper for his children in that case to make the children activity oriented in this discussion many uh, people told that the scarcity of education materials is one of the uh, factor where a teacher cannot use it properly so teacher should be prepared himself in that way a simple materials we should be able to make the children interesting and they will be involved in their activity that's important question and the planning is very important thing uh, teacher should communicate with the parents with the head of the institution with the managing committee and he have to make a study lot as the art is changing for example today we are in a conversation if a teacher like me if i just listen other i can change my mindset 
Many examples are coming here. Characteristics of a teacher should be in that way. He will love the children who will think how he will take the challenge and how he will mitigate the challenge. For that, he have to continue his education. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your informative and uh, visible uh, answer. Uh, I have another question, uh, Dr. Uh, sir Mujibur Rahman, uh, Associate Professor Chattogram College, uh, uh, who drives school improvement programs, the most teacher or school leaders. Uh, Mujibur Rahman, sir, are you there? Hello, Mujibur Rahman, sir, are you there? Uh, hello, Mujibur. Please unmute your microphone. Sir, unmute your microphone, please. Can I hear into you? Uh, sir, please unmute your phone. Unmute your phone. Yes, yes, yes. I'm listening. I'm listening. Uh, uh, who drives this? Yes, what's the yes, question? Sir. Who drives school improvement programs the most teacher or school leaders? Who drives the school improvement programs the most teacher oh. or leaders? Oh, OK, OK. Uh, actually, it's a collaborative activity indeed. Students and teachers must work together. But teachers have to play their most vital role. Because teachers can motivate, they can regulate, and they can direct. So in this respect, I consider teachers uh, play the vital role. And it is a collaborative one. Thank you, sir. Uh, my last question, uh, Shondip Maloya, how best can I measure uh, creatively as an outcome of learning? How best can I measure creatively as an outcome of learning? Shondip Maloya. Yes, yes. The best outcome of our of a teacher is when the child gets up very freely, smilingly comes to you and asks you a question related to the subject, not to his personal life, but to the subject on which you are teaching. That shows that you have taught him the best because he is freely coming to you, clearing his doubts and going back to his place. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I will in this instance I will take audience feedback, please. Uh, wants to anyone to give his or her feedback our, about our sessions? Please. No. Uh, I will uh, request. I uh, yes. Actually, I asked two questions. That's why I'm hesitant whether I should say or not. Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh. uh, thank you very much. I want to give the feedback to you. Actually, uh, this is my first pre, uh, program that I have, I have joined with some uh, quality, qualified teachers from uh, home and abroad. Uh, to, uh, in my opinion, that is, uh, I have learned many things, many things, uh, especially I have not any idea about the quality education. And Patricia Ma'am uh, taught everything uh, very nicely. Also, uh, Shantip Sir said how to reach uh, to the students. And our uh, Sir, Honorable Sir, uh, she said also about uh, how we can uh, apply our this knowledge to our students and which uh, part can take the role to make the students uh, and our uh, quali education quali uh, quality full. So thank you very much. Uh, it was very effective and a nice program. And the discipline was uh, really excellent. And all the participants attended very nicely. And you, the uh, Montas ma'am, you was very, you was a very nice uh, presenter. You controlled everything very well. I have learned and inshallah, I will apply the knowledge uh, to my students uh, to, to make uh, a change in my school. And at the same time, I will share my knowledge to my uh, colleagues uh, so that they can apply this knowledge. 
And thank you very much uh, for this excellent session. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Uh, in this stage, uh, does anyone feed uh, to give her or his uh, feedback? Uh, Mustafa, sir, uh, please yes, say sir. something. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Shubhratu Rai Chaudhuri. I want to say something for feedback. Can I say something? Yes. Just one minute. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much once again. Uh, actually, this is first time for me to attend such types of program. Actually, I have learned a lot, which will be, uh, which will make me able to apply my teaching at my respective institutions. At the same time, I will uh, share my experience, which I have gathered here from our women abroad uh, educators special gears. Uh, so actually, quality education uh, can be ensured by applying our quality teaching. If we uh, apprehend to uh, the very aspects of quality education, then we will be able to apply this in our uh, practical classroom atmosphere. So actually, I have gathered a lot of knowledge from today's session. Uh, which cannot be uh, sustained without this program. So thanks all for um, such kind of thank, program. Thanks. Thank you, Shubhuta sir. Govindo sir, uh, maybe raise his hand. Govindo Choudhury. Govindo Choudhury. Govindo Choudhury. Please unmute your phone. Govindo Choudhury. Uh, Nargis NGD, raise your hand, please. Unmute your phone. Okay. In this stage, uh, I will request combinedly uh, Shamsuddin Talukda sir and Mujibur Rahman sir uh, to uh, summarize entire our session. First of all, Mujibur Rahman sir. Indeed, everybody, those who participated in the program, uh, it's a very successful program, I would say. All the teachers, uh, those who gathered over here, they actually, I could say, they presented themselves uh, wonderfully well. And in this pandemic time, uh, their well thought out conversation enlightened me. I am enlightened. And I think uh, this platform will be able to contribute much. Teachers, those who are participating, those who are asking questions, and uh, teacher educators, those who delivered their lecture over here, uh, everybody contributed, uh, I would say, something worthy, something valuable. And uh, I would like to uh, say that the time yet to come, that is, uh, uh, that is ahead of time, we are looking ahead. Uh, this uh, trouble time, I think, will be over soon and we'll be able to uh, go back to normalcy once again. And I think the sort of uh, conversation would uh, sharpen the way, would pave the way for uh, disseminating quality education. Quality education, uh, what we are thinking over here, throughout, uh, that is through our thinking, it is clear that uh, it won't be done overnight. Quality comes with the teachers. If teachers are knowledgeable, qualified, if they can sharpen their skills, then automatically they'll be able to uh, disseminate it among their students and ultimately the situation will be uh, presented where quality will be ensured. I would like to thank everybody, those who are here. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, sir, for your excellent summarizing. Uh, and next, uh, Shamsuddin Talukda, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, that we share wonderful ideas. Really excellent. COVID uh, gave this chance uh, that we have to share again and again and again, and we will sharpen our ideas and thinking. Uh, many new ideas every day I am learning from the people around the earth. Really, this is a very good opportunity. Uh, before this, uh, Bajibur Rahman sir really and nicely explained 
why we need uh, quality education and how should we act for that. Gradually, we are learning from every part of the art. And quality exactly depend on when people fall in any problem or in any struggle, he will try to find out the ways. COVID enhance this thing. Really, we uh, go ahead more than 20 years as COVID come here. Now in Bangladesh, almost every teacher knew how to operate computer. And in beginning, a friend from India told me, uh, he tried for three days to edit a simple video, but uh, Gail from uh, YouTube, he did it within three hours. And this is our opportunity that we can use. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mamutas, for your excellent program. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm grateful to everyone for their support, and I hope you will find me. I, I hope you will find me in future time. I have learned a lot from today's valuable space. I hope we will have a good time today and put what we got out of here. Hopefully, we will follow these guidelines for the quality of our education. You have honored me for a long time. I'm ending with gratitude and thanks again. Hope that uh, we, uh, you will stay with us uh, all time in FISAR and stay with us our Bangladesh chapter, All Educator. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. You, a lot for ev to everybody. Thank you uh, very thanks much. For, thank thanks you for arising this program. I learned a, a mm -hmm. lot of technique. Of course, the technique will enrich my working life. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. How will I will be connected with you? With Bangladesh chapter, just Facebook, we, we, one educator, Bangladesh chapter, just search bar. Any group, Facebook group? Facebook, yes. My Facebook group, one educator, our one educators team, uh, one educators, we India chapter, one educators, we Nepal chapter, one educators, Bangladesh chapter. Uh, can I, uh, can I end the session? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes. Madam, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for a stay long time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Collaboration. Uh, thank you, Sir Police Sir. Thank you, Mustafa Palam Shorkas Sir. Thanks, my national uh, home and abroad, uh, all, uh, all educators. Uh, so uh, I really I uh, grateful all of you. Uh, thanks. I see. Uh, I I hope that uh, we'll meet uh, next. Uh, we'll soon meet uh, next time. Uh, thank you, everyone. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. Yeah, Just leave the program. <laughs>